What can the matter be, oh dear? What can the matter be? We want a fourth budget to pass. Others suggest that we increase the budget. Now others suggest that we increase the budget. Now others suggest that we increase the budget to get a fourth budget to pass. Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? A new budget is long overdue. Some suggest that we borrow more money now. Some suggest that we borrow more money now. Some suggest that we borrow more money and place the town further in debt. Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? The new budget will be coming soon. Others suggest that we need some more revenue. Others suggest that we need some more revenue. Others suggest that we need some more revenue to help the town shoulder the load. Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? Let's increase the revenue soon. The Torrington Mayoral Charter is different in some respects from our proposed mayoral form. Tonight's program is meant as an example of the councilman or selectman in the Winstead mayoral form. In the mayoral form, as many aspects will be the same in the Winstead mayoral form. Best to read the Win Winchester Charter information available in town clerk's office before voting one way or the other. The Torrington Charter is available in the City Clerk's Office at the City Hall in Torrington. Any mistakes are mine alone. The agenda for tonight is quickly, in back of me for this program and the next four will be the uh, Mineto State Park, which was Caleb Beach's home before it was sold to Torrington uh, some years ago. The Mayoral Board of Selectmen, I will talk a bit about that, and then we will have an interview with Rick Della Valle, the long-serving member of the Torrington City Council. That will last roughly 50 minutes. The Winchester Selectmen, if a mayoral form of government, uh, the, the Selectmen w must be resident and electors. There will be five Selectmen Elect, elected. In Torrington there are six. There will be five here. Uh, the, it's an elected office, two-year terms. They serve without compensation. A minority representation applies. Legislative body together with the town meeting. They're the legislative body together with the town meeting. Three members will make a quorum. They have the authority to pres uh, pro prescribe by the charter and the state statutes. The mayor is a member of the Board of Selectmen. The mayor presides at all selectmen meetings with a vote in case of a tie. Robert's rules of order apply. The selectmen may designate a parliamentarian if not the mayor, uh, the, uh, the mayor, if not, the mayor shall act as parliamentarian. Selectmen must vote aye or nay on each vote unless a conflict of interest, which must be stated unless prohibited by law or professional rule. The selectmen will have the authority to investigate all officers and agencies of the town if passed by a majority of the selectmen. The selectmen appoint an investigative officer who may call witnesses, issue subpoenas, examine books and records and papers, 
uh, and papers for the term of office and two years after no selectman can be appointed to any office of profit or conduct business or profit with the town or its board of education the selectman and the mayor can receive a statement of qualifications and interview all prospective members of all boards commissions and authorities Selectmen may vote to request the resignation, censor, suspension, or termination of any commission board or authority member for acts beyond granted authority. Waste, continual absence, neglectful attention to significant activities, failure to perform uh, duties, failure to cooperate in the interests of the town or other liability issues in matters that are unethical, fraudulent, or grave uh, seriousness. Due process proceedings must be afforded, and the board must have a quorum and majority vote in favor. Uh, the selectmen cannot diminish the mayor's authority by ordinance, vote, or otherwise unless they were opposed by uh, the selectmen. They cannot interfere with the mayor's exercising his or her duties, cannot give orders to any of the mayor's subordinates, either publicly or privately. The board of selectmen may, in special circumstances or for any investigation, provide by resolution for the temporary employment of counsel other than the town attorney. Uh, the Board of Selectmen prescribe in the bylaws and ordinances penalties and fines not exceeding $100 per offense or $1,000 in the aggregate. Now we will have an interview that I conducted with the long-standing member of the uh, Torrington Town Council, Rick Della Valley. Brian O'Haran. Today I'm going to interview a Republican councilman from the city of Torrington, uh, Councilman Rick Del Valley, and I'll be asking him a lot, uh, several questions. And uh, this is his program. He's going to be answering most of these questions, and uh, we're trying to be as apolitical, as truthful, and honest uh, as possible. So first, Rick, I'd like to ask you what what is your background? Well, first of all, I've been in politics since the early '80s. Um, I opened a business in the city of Torrington, and we had 12-minute parking meters in the center of Torrington, and I thought that was uh, not a good thing for business, that we needed longer parking meters so that people could actually come into your store and shop. If they were concerned about getting a ticket, they would just run in and run out and not really have the time. So I went to City Hall, and I tried to get the parking meters changed, and they told me that the only way I could ever get anything changed was to actually get involved that just sitting on the outside and making complaints really wasn't the answer, that they wanted you to be involved in politics and to affect those changes. So that's exactly what I did. I started, uh, I joined the Democratic Town Committee at the time and uh, started getting interested in what they did. I found out the avenues that I had to take to actually change the parking meters, which we did get changed eventually and they still left a couple in the service areas by the banks and by the dry cleaners where people did want to run in and run out but all the rest of the meters were changed after that and you can still find a couple lying around here and there um, so then in uh, 1989 I decided to run for the city council and I was elected as a democratic city councilman in 1989 to 1991 in uh, later years, when I, I, I didn't run again, I did actually, I ran again the next, the next year, 2001, when I lost the election. So I ran again um, in 2001, and I had, in the meantime, become a Republican at that, during that period of time, and I ran as a Republican uh, council member, as a candidate for council on the Republican ticket. So I was elected 2001 and that term went to 2003. In 2003, I ran for mayor on the Republican ticket, and I was defeated by the Democratic mayor, who was an incumbent at the time. And so I was out for two years because I couldn't run for both offices at once. Came back on the city council from 2005 to 2007, and was reelected in 2007 and serving my current fourth term right now. This might be a difficult question, but why, why do you think you lost the second time? When you <coughs> the second time I ran, uh, I was actually involved in a primary, so I never made it to the general election. I lost in a primary. I lost my chance to run in the primary. Okay, well, it looks like you came back, and that's what a good, good businessman do. They, they hang in there. Okay, now, what about education? Are you, were you born in Torrington? <coughs> I was born and raised in Torrington. Um, I left school without my diploma to go into the military. 
I got my diploma in the military, and I have about three quarters of the credits I need for a degree. I just never finished it uh, in human services at Northwestern. So um, most of my experience is, is actually working and, and doing things hands-on. Okay, how many candidates um, can any one political party nominate for the city council? We can run four candidates on each party. And uh, the sixth highest vote getters get elected. Are the councilmen remunerated? We get a hundred dollars a month, um, and that's set uh, every budget year by the city council. When I was on in 1989, we were getting a hundred dollars a month and a hundred dollars a month for a gas stipend, uh, and we were in some pretty serious budget. Uh, problems at that time, so I suggested back in, in 1990 that we take away the $100 gas stipend, and it's never been brought back since. So Now, uh, what is the difference between remuneration and a stipend? Well, the gas stipend isn't really pay. It's just something they give you because you go to the meetings and they're paying you the money to, it's almost like mileage. Yeah. Uh, and then the other w is actually your pay to, to be a council member. I think we covered this pretty well, but uh, I always ask everybody what their party affiliation is now, um, and that's Republican. It is Republican, yes. Have you been uh, on a city council with a Democratic mayor? Uh, yeah, I've been both, actually. As, as, a, as a Democrat, I had a Republican mayor, and one term as a Republican, I had a Democratic mayor. And then the last two terms have been with a Democratic, uh, with a Republican mayor. You're very good for this uh, for this program because that's what I'm, I'm kind of interested in into these interrelationships between the parties and things because that's a big concern in in our town here. And, and I have to tell you though, as I ran each election, for each campaign to to be elected to the council, I ran in the party that I was in. The, the first race as a Democrat, I ran as a candidate, a Democratic candidate for city council. And now, in the last three terms, I've run as a Republican candidate for city council. And each time that I've won, the day you're sworn in, you then become a city councilman, not a Democrat, not a Republican. You become a city councilman because the object of being a, on the council is for the greater good of all the people, not for, for political parties. Now, when you run, with the Democrats or the Republicans, did you do you have a platform? Well, you usually run with the mayor's platform, and you can expound on that. But usually, a, a city council candidate tries not to make their own platform. They they follow the lead of the mayoral candidate, and it's a joint platform. And what what we do is, uh, most of the times that I've run, we've run as a, a, a united team all four of us on all the signs with the mayor, everything was done as a united front. Okay. Uh, what, what about um, when you run under the mayor's platform and then you win and you become um, a councilman trying to be as fair as possible to the city and uh, do you have any conflict between that? What, what was promised while running for election and what uh, you're voting for once you're on the council? Um, I don't ever have a conflict on the promises made during a campaign, but there are times that e even though the mayor may be of your party, that you may not agree with everything that comes from the mayor's office. And, th and that's just going to happen. You know, everybody's not going to agree all the time on every issue. And it, I, don't, I don't really consider that a conflict. I just think it's, it's a matter of opinion. Uh, we each have our opinion on things, to how things should be done. But I think that 99% of the time that it works for the, for the best interests of the majority of the citizens. Who are you responsible to? To the, uh, to, to the citizens in the city of Torrington. What are you responsible for as a council member? As a council member, I'm responsible for voting on issues that, that um, are the legis we're the legislative body of the city, and we take care of all financial needs. We have to approve uh, anything being done prior to going to the finance board and uh, appointments to boards and commissions and things of those. So we're the legislative body of the city of Torrington. Okay, I don't think we've answered this, but maybe we have with the, your previous question, but what have been the compositions of the city council for each of your terms? Okay, when I, in 1989 to 1991, it was three Democrats, three Republicans. From 2001 to 2003, 
Uh, it was four Republicans, two Democrats. I was one of the Republicans under a Democratic mayor. In 2003 to 2000, and f I'm sorry, 2005 to 2007, it was three to three under a Republican mayor. And this last term here, 2007 to the present, it's four to two Republican Democrat uh, under a Republican mayor. So you've had quite a mixture. Yes. Do you find party affiliations helpful or a concern in Tarrington when trying to get the job done? I find it neither. I find it makes no difference what party you belong to. Uh, when you vote on an issue, you vote with the best interests of everyone at heart, regardless of affiliation. And do you feel that the various party elected officials work together amicably and harmoniously in Tarrington for the good of the city the majority of the time? Absolutely. Um, how do you obtain your authority as a councilman? Uh, by state legislative powers and the city charter. What is the city councilman and the city council's relationship with a mayor? Our relationship, uh, are you asking how it is, like good or bad, or what we actually do for interaction? For interaction. Interaction is that we, we um, are allowed to have conversation with the mayor about issues that, that are brought to our attention or issues that we feel are important to the city, uh, to bring them to an agenda, to bring them to a council meeting for a public hearing. Uh, the, we give advice and consent on appointments to boards and agencies and commissions in the city. Um, we're, we're basically a team. We're, we're an entire team that, that works with a captain, and uh, all of our input is just as important from one person as it is from another. Okay, now, the thing that always interests me is this, uh, that the mayor has the ability to vote in case of a tie. Right. Uh, and that would say to me that in some cases he can um, help create policy if he gets that vote is that oh, there, there's no question yeah. there's no question and the mayor has broken ties uh, a few times and that would uh, change the policy from one direction to another it would yes what is the city council and councilman's relationship with the finance board um, we make suggestions and recommendations to the finance board on the budgets and on uh, expenditures and we have a very close working relationship with the board of finance is it usually harmonious absolutely what is the city council's relationship with the city attorney? Uh, the city attorney, we, we seek opinions from, from her, and we abide by any opinions that she sets down uh, or sets forth for any issues that come before us, and we rely heavily on her at council meetings uh, when any legal issue arises. You're lucky you have her there full time at the Absolutely, council. and she's at every council meeting, which is, which is yeah. a dramatic uh, difference in not having someone and having to wait, I'll call somebody tomorrow and get an answer for you. It's, it's great to have her right there. Can you hold any office or position of profit under the government of the United States or the city of Torrington? Well, I noticed you left out uh, state in that. You can work for the state. Oh. You, you can be employed, that, yeah, you can be employed by the state of Connecticut. And as a matter of fact, in, in, in a roundabout way, you can, you can be a, a, an employee of the city of Torrington and the Board of Education. We have one member of the city council who is a teacher, and he is currently employed as a teacher in the Torrington school system and is a member of the city council. But no, as a, as a council member, you cannot work for the city per se in any city departments, yeah. but you can work for the school board. I noticed when I read the uh, charter, it said that there were two exceptions. One was a notary public and an election official. Well, a notary, a notary public really isn't a, a job. You don't hold a job with the city. It's, it's, a, it's an elected position, not by name, but on the, on the presidential ballot every four years, uh, Democrats and Republicans are put up by number. Fifteen Democrats, twenty Republicans, whichever the number happens to be. But your name doesn't actually appear on the ballot, so it's not, you're not really working for the city or anyone else. Your uh, elect it's an elected position. A notary public is is, uh, and I'm I'm sorry, not justice of the peace. I, I I get confused on that. The justice of the peace is not. A notary public isn't really a job either. Yeah. Neither of which are a job. I am a notary. I am a justice of the peace. So. You are. But yes, but mm -hmm. neither of them are are paying jobs. Who chairs the meeting in the absence of the mayor? Temporary absence <coughs> of the mayor. The acting mayor. The acting mayor is appointed by the mayor, and the way we've done it for the last two terms is uh, each of the four Republicans 
in this term are uh, covering for one quarter. And I, actually today my quarter was up. I had July, August, and September of this year. Um, and, and I chaired one meeting during that time when he was away uh, as acting mayor. What was that experience like? It was okay. I've done it before. Um, it was a little different not being able to vote and, you know, not having a say, you know, as a council member. Uh, just bringing the agenda forward and asking for votes and motions uh, was a complete opposite of what I actually do. But if there a was a tie, you'd have been able to vote. Absolutely. Yeah, there was no tie when you were there. There was no tie. Okay. Um, I haven't seen a tie there yet. Mostly it's um, unanimous. There's only been a few. Yeah. There's only been a few ties. Who prepares the agendas? The agenda is prepared by the city clerk's office. Can council members input to the agenda? Free council team? members can, uh, but as a professional courtesy, you run it through the mayor first. It's it's always best to to go go through the mayor's office for anything you want to put on the agenda, so there's no surprises. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, who prepares the minutes for your approval? Uh, the assistant city clerk, normally, or the city clerk. How often do you meet? We meet the first and third Mondays of every month, unless this, unless that falls on a holiday, then it goes to the next day, which is Tuesday. And then any other time for any special meetings, um, uh, for whatever reason. For but during budget time, we meet weekly. You know, going over the budgets. Uh, there may be things that come up that uh, an emergency road job has to be done. The money has to be approved, so we would call a special meeting for that. So there are different different reasons that we would do that. But uh, except for budget time, that probably happens once or twice a year. Okay. Who attends the meetings regularly? Well, a lot of department heads come. Council members, city attorney, um, city clerk, city the assistant city clerk, and the general public. Do you get many people from the demo, uh, public general public? Depends on the issues at hand. There are some hot items that people you know the place fills up, and there's others that uh, one or two people come. In the case, for example, of the dog park, how many people would show up for that one? Or was uh, it the, a special the, meeting? The dog park? No, it wasn't a special. Well, there was a special meeting afterwards, but it wasn't a council meeting. It was a meeting with the neighbors. Um, but when it came to the council, maybe just uh, a dozen or so. Yeah, and are they courteous when they come to the meetings? I would say that 99.9% .9 of the time, everyone who comes before us is courteous. Is there a clerk of the Board of Councilmen? The city clerk. What is a quorum for the transaction of business? Uh, four members of the six. Okay, this is an interesting question. How much individual preparation uh, is necessary for an average meeting? Well, it's quite a variable on that. Uh, it depends on the length of the agenda, the seriousness of the items on the agenda, and uh, just the complexity of it. That, that so, some weeks I'll spend a half an hour preparing, you know, my comments or suggestions uh, on the agenda before it gets to the meeting. Uh, some weeks I'll spend five to six hours uh, in research and phone calls during the week to try to get answers. I don't, I don't really like to ask questions at the meeting and not know what I'm asking, I like to do the research ahead of time if possible and then get the answers and at least come prepared. I, I will still ask questions about it, but at least I'll be a little more prepared to ask them than just reading the thing that night. I do notice when I attend your meetings that you are very well, well in fact, most of the, most of the uh, council people are pretty well prepared. Right. You can see that they've done Well, you have to. If you walk in and you open up your packet and lay all this mm -hmm. paperwork out in front of you, you're lost. You just, you know, you're in a fog and trying to listen to what they're saying and, and make sense of it. And there's questions that can't be answered there that night. Someone may not be there to have the right answer, so it's best to try to do it ahead of time. Do you have to vote aye or nay on any issue or recuse and give a reason? Well, uh, you either vote yes or no, or you can abstain. And unless challenged, it's not required that you give a reason. But there if you're challenged, then you have to give If you're challenged, then yeah, I don't think anybody's ever challenged why they've abstained. Why they, no, I don't think anyone has ever been challenged on that. And you don't abstain that often. So most times you would abstain, it would be something where it would be a personal financial gain for you, uh, you know, something that dealt with you directly with what you do for work or whatever. So that, that, in that case, then that's where you would abstain. But very seldom do we come across that.
Okay. And another reason you'll abstain from a vote on the minutes mostly is if you didn't attend the meeting where the minutes were that you're going to approve. How many times would you say, just a rough idea, would, do you think you'd recuse yourself in a year? I would say in the four terms I'd probably recuse myself twice. Can council members determine the rules of their proceedings? Absolutely. Can Absolutely. Yeah. I just I, wanna, I just want to touch on on the on the, on the recusing myself. Oh, sure. uh, the the one that stands out the most is uh, several years back we were we were looking to approve a veterans exemption, uh, a special exemption like where you would get another up to another ten thousand dollars, and your income le levels could be a lot higher than they were before, and that was something that the state allowed the municipalities to do, but each municipality had to pass it. I am a veteran. I was able to take advantage of that, so I abstained from voting on it because that would have benefited me financially. So I refused to vote on the issue because of that. So that's that's a you know one of the major examples of abstaining from something that that will actually pertain to you. Okay. So have you ever in a council meeting ever uh, determined as a team the rules of your proceedings? Or do you just follow Robert's Rules of Order? Well, or? We, we're mainly following Robert's Rules of Orders, but there are times, for example, if uh, we're on an issue and somebody wants to talk from the public, not generally accepted uh, or allowed, then the council has the right to say yes or no, that person can't talk and we can we could change things. We could actually move items on the agenda to accommodate somebody waiting in the audience to, to come up with an item. We can move that up closer th on the agenda so the person doesn't have to stay there. So there are certain things that we can do legislatively there, but we are governed by Robert's Rules of Orders. Are your meetings open to the public? Absolutely. All meetings? Huh? All meetings, and the only the only m portion of a meeting, the executive session, is not open to the public. But no votes can be taken in executive session, no decisions can be made. It all has to be done when you come out into the public. And you also can't tell anybody what happened in there, right? Absolutely not. Does that ever happen when somebody gets caught saying anything? Uh, over my career, I've seen it happen, yes. I've seen it happen. Are your meetings broadcast on TV? <laughs> Unfortunately, they're not. I wish they were. And I'm hoping that the new city hall will have the capabilities to do it. The Torrington High School has the capabilities to do it, therefore our Board of Education meetings are broadcast. Uh, city Hall does not have the capability currently, and I'm hoping that the new city hall does, because I think it's important that the public see what the city leaders are doing. Reading about it in the newspaper doesn't give you the true story of what happened mm -hmm. at a meeting. Can you enact ordinances? Yes, we can. The ordinance first comes to an ordinance committee, which I'm a member of. Actually, I'm the chairman of the ordinance committee. Uh, it comes to the committee first. The committee meets uh, with corporation counsel, does research, has the corporation counsel do the legal work, put the wording together. Uh, once it passes through the ordinance committee, it then goes to the full city council to go for a public hearing. Each ordinance has to have a public hearing. Public hearing is held. We take public input. We can change, alter, or leave alone the ordinance that was proposed at the public hearing. Uh, then the city council votes on it. Once the city council votes on it, it has to be published in the newspaper for 30 days, and then it goes into effect. Now, what if somebody wants to overrule? No, it's not possible. Can't do it. Cannot do it. Not the public, the public can edit. There can be no uh, repealing or amending an ordinance without the city council's vote. What, what, uh, what is there, um, can they re raise a petition? Well, uh, there, there's, a, there's a clause in the charter that says that you can, you can petition for the budget, but it's a non-binding petition. It does not have to be heard by the council. They can hear it, but they don't have to accept it. They don't have to accept the results of the petition. So, okay. and, that, and that does not pertain to ordinances. That only pertains to the budget. All right. Does it pertain to Part A and Part B of the budget, or just Part B of the budget? The city side of the budget, I believe. Yeah. Part I A. Believe that, yes. Yeah, I believe it's just the city side of the budget. What boards and commissions do does the council appoint members to? Um, almost all of them. That we we vote on every person appointed, whether it's a mayoral appointment only or an appointment with uh, advice and consent of the council. Uh, the mayor brings it forward and, and we also have the opportunity as council members to, to uh, recommend people to come onto boards 
and it has to go to the full council for a vote. And do you have any, uh, can you appoint anybody on your own without the mayor uh, being involved? No, we cannot. Can the mayor in interview all the candidates uh, that you would propose? Absolutely. And you c can you interview all the candidates that the mayor would propose? I, I believe we could. I've always I've always felt that, uh, and, and I don't. No one's ever ever really grasped my idea. I, I, I mean, I'm just like a, a rebel on this idea. I think that any time that an agency that, that a vacancy occurs in, in a board or a commission in the city of Torrington, I've always been under the belief that we should advertise for that position. Popularity to to appoint somebody because they're popular or because somebody knows them or likes them isn't always in the best interest of the, of the board or commission that they're being appointed to. I felt that if, if we were looking for somebody in land use or zoning that we would advertise and say, you know, we have an opening on this board. You know, if you have experience in this area, would you please contact us if you'd like to, to uh, volunteer your time. And I think that would be the best way to fill these boards with qualified people, not to say that any person who goes on a board isn't qualified, but the reality of it is you may get somebody on a board who has no idea whatsoever of what they're doing on that particular board. They may be very knowledgeable about politics and about the community, but how much knowledge they really have about that issue sometimes concerns me. Now, just a quick question since we're talking about that. Do you get, when the mayor appoints the finance board members, are you, do you have to uh, approve that? Yes, we do. Can the Board of Councilmen remove members from any of these boards or commissions? With the mayor, uh, yes, the council could. Yes, yeah. for just cause, of course. Yeah. And what do you when you say just cause? What does that mean? Well, they would have to they would have to violate the you know code of ethics or. Um, uh, violate standards of practice for for what they've done there have I don't ever recall a person being removed I know people have resigned under pressure from some of the boards and commissions uh, for statements that were made to the general public uh, you know th just th th there have been people who have not been courteous to the public and, and made you know some some statements that should not have been made and therefore you know someone asked them to maybe resign rather than be removed from the position but I've never seen anyone actually removed from a board Can a council member be removed from office? No, they cannot. No, no there's no recall uh, uh, provision in our city charter. I believe, and, and I'm, I'm not gonna swear to this number, but I think there's either six or seven municipalities in the state of Connecticut that have a recall provision. And that's, and you, and that's got to be done through state legislation. That is not something that can be done locally. Is there any move in that direction at the state level? There is not. Mm -hmm. There is not. Would you run again for office? Yes, I will. You will? I will. I enjoy what I do, and I think that I make a difference and, and contribute to, to the better, the well-being of the city of Torrington, so I will continue to run. You don't find it frustrating? No, I do not. You find it rewarding? Absolutely rewarding. Who presides over the city council meetings? The mayor. And does the mayor have a vote? Only when there's a tie. How often would you guess he has to exercise that vote and say a uh, term? I would say his last term, maybe once or twice. This term, probably about the same so far. Not very often. When he does exercise the vote, do you think it makes a major difference uh, in the swing of the outcome? or? Uh, well, it, it absolutely makes a major difference because his his vote is the swing vote. So it's going to go whichever way he feels it should at that point because the peop the other council members have already spoken. Now, a lot of the time when the mayor gets into a position where he has to vote uh, to break a tie is because the full six members aren't there. That could create a problem sometimes for him to do that. So, but most times it's not. There's not an issue. Would he ever sort of say, "Let's table this issue until there is a full board of councilmen here"? We we have asked to uh, table items absolutely, and the mayor has asked to table things until everybody was there, until we had more information on items. Absolutely, that would be the prudent thing to do in some cases. Yes, I don't think it would 
it would be prudent to do it just to, to try to get a vote your way, but it would be prudent to make sure that all members had the ap opportunity to vote and at least speak on the issues before them. Can you exercise the right of eminent domain? Yes, we can. I don't agree with it, but we can. Yeah. Do you ever do it? I never have. No. I never have on any of my terms. But I, I, and I, again, I don't agree with it. I, I probably would not. It would have to be a very, very drastic measure for me to, to go along with eminent domain. I just, it's not something, it's not a practice but I believe. Has the council ever gone for eminent domain, even though you were, say, vote against it? Not on my, any of my terms. Okay. Do you designate for management employees the rates of pay, benefits, and working conditions? We don't designate. We vote on them. We vote on union contracts. The union contracts are negotiated by our labor attorney, Vic Michelle, and by our personnel department and members of the union and members of management in those departments. So we don't really designate rates of pay. Um, we do have a uh, management resolution that the council decided, and that's for 17 employees of the city. We decided their rates of pay, their terms of uh, employment, but that's it. That's Is that all because they're not in the unions? <coughs> exactly. Yeah, they're, they're appointed positions, and they serve, uh, usually serve at the pleasure of the mayor uh, during their term. So. And what do you think your uh, the overall Torrington... So council, Board of Councilmen's relationship is with the unions? I think we have a very good relationship with the unions currently. I haven't, uh, I'm a member of the personnel committee and I think in my last term we only met twice and this term we haven't met at all. So, and the personnel committee is the committee that hears the grievances and things of that sort with personnel issues. So I would have to say that our relationship is pretty good with the unions right now. How many committees are you on, a member of? Uh, uh, two. I'm a member of the Personnel Committee and the Ordinance Committee. Okay. And then others, small ones, like the Subcommittee of the Budget. Uh, I'm on the Blight Committee. Um, I was on a committee, a subcommittee, for um, changing or looking into the strategy being used for pensions going forward, things of that sort. So I do volunteer for, for subcommittees. They're not permanent committee assignments, but uh, the Blight Committee is pretty permanent, and I sit on that, so that's important. When you sit on these committees, are they mainly other members of the council, or, or are, are there like members of the public on these committees? Well, it depends on the, on the committee. Um, the Ordinance Committee and the Personnel Committee are council members only. Um, the Blight Committee, are uh, members of uh, different organizations, different organizations outside, like the health department. Um, the uh, planning and zoning is involved. Building department is involved. Uh, the um, economic development coordinator is involved in it. So, and, and then council members and the mayor and the mayor's administrative assistant is involved. We all come together with different views on issues, uh, you know, with blighted properties and things like that. But most of the subcommittees are uh, comprised of members of the council that are appointed by the mayor. The mayor appoints the members of those committees. Does the council, the council have investigative or investigatory powers? As a council. Yeah. Just as a council. We ha well, I won't, I won't say that. As a member of the council, I have uh, the, the right to ask for records from the city. Subpoena powers we also have a, a, in a true investigation, but it has to be from the entire council. The entire council has to vote to uh, subpoena records or subpoena people in to testify uh, in investigations. But, but if we want something, normally what we'll do is we'll go to the department head or we'll go to whatever department it is and ask for the information that we're looking at to try to come to some kind of resolution. Uh, but, a, but a serious investigation, we go through the mayor's office and, and it's coordinated through there. Now, how often have you had to do this during your many terms? Uh, twice. Do you find that you have to uh, exercise the subpoena power, uh, or do people voluntarily give you the information? Uh, I have never been involved in, in exercising subpoena power. 
And if you did do that, the the city attorney. Uh, well, one of the one of the issues that I was involved in did did include subpoenas, but it was not through the board of council. It was through the board of public safety. Okay. The issue went to the board of public safety. They subpoenaed people in for their investigation of it. Can the councilman borrow money? No. No. Now, as a as a as a person, I, I, maybe I'm confused on the question. No, I mean, do pe uh, do you have to approve the borrowing of money? Let's put it that Absolutely. way. Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes, we do. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Yeah, well, I misstated. So, yeah, I misstated. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we have to approve. Yeah, cause even even now, we you know, Dick Friday is our treasurer, and he has been for many years. Um, Dick will occasionally look, go out there and look for a better package, and get us a better interest rate, and uh, he brings it to us. We approve it. And then the next budget, there's a tremendous savings because you know, and, and millions and millions of dollars we're holding, uh, you know, a drop in the interest rate really makes a big difference to our budget. So yeah, we do, he brings it to us, and he does a fantastic job with that. Now, under under what other conditions will people come to you to borrow money? Um, well, we we'll, we can approve uh, small cities monies, people uh, for uh, housing rehab, for small business loans. We can approve loans, and we can approve uh, the loans for the housing rehab. Um, we also have to approve any monies coming uh, from the state under the small cities grants. Anybody applying for those, the council has to approve those before it can actually be submitted and requested. And once the councilmen approve these things, is, is the city then obligated? Yes. Yes. Can the electors propose ordinances to the city council? Anyone can propose an ordinance to the city council. Does it happen very often? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Electors come with ideas. Uh, uh, departments come with ideas. You know, people now, there's a, there's a big thing where people are clamoring about all these shopping carts all over the city, how, how terrible it looks. And, you know, we've tried to work with them for years, and we just can't get the cooperation of all the stores involved. And so we decided that, you know, maybe it's time to get an ordinance to get those shopping carts off the street. So, and that was brought by, by, by public outcry. Uh, but there's been, there's been several that people, skateboarding. Uh, people wanted a skateboard ordinance because they were tired of kids running up and down the sidewalk. So, yeah, any, anybody can bring an idea forward to the, to the committee. And then uh, <clears throat> we hear it, and, and if we find merit to it, um, then we go forward. There was a meeting a few months back where a woman came, and she was complaining that too many cats were congregating on her front lawn. She wanted us to, to pass an ordinance to stop people from allowing cats to go on her lawn. Uh, that was a difficult one. We that didn't get out of committee and go any farther, unfortunately, because it's kind of hard to regulate. You know, if somebody's cat goes on your lawn, it's that that was a tough one. How about the all-terrain vehicles. All-terrain vehicles uh, are regulated by the state, so to pass a, a city ordinance uh, would be defeatist because uh, the state regulations would would supersede ours. See, we can never pass an ordinance that is superseded by a state law or state act, it, our ordinance wouldn't, wouldn't hold up. Now, when the electors do propose ordinances, do they do, how do they do it? Do they do it by petition? No, it doesn't necessarily have to be a petition, a phone call, um, a, a letter, an email, uh, in any fashion. It doesn't necessarily have to be by petition. I've never seen one by petition, so. And do the electors have the power, I think you answered this earlier, but I want to ask it again anyway, do electors have the power to approve or reject ordinances at a referendum? They do not. Not in any, not in no, any. No, because ordinances do not go to a referendum. The only thing that goes to a referendum is, is spending. Any, any capital improvement projects, any spending in excess, right now in excess of $100,000. But the electors can't raise <coughs> a petition with a number, a certain number of, uh, of signatures and force a referendum on any ordinance? On an ordinance? No, they cannot. When we talk about the mayoral form of government uh, around Winston, there are several questions that come up. And these are kind of questions that I'd like to put to you to see what your, um, what your comments would be. Number one, and again, if you don't feel comfortable, don't answer the question, but when you mention the mayoral form of government, the first thing anybody brings up that's against the mayoral form of government is corruption. That, you know, point to other cities in Connecticut or other cities in America that have a mayoral form and they say, oh, you know, that breeds corruption, <laughs> you know. What is your view about that? Well, I, I, I say that um, 
any type of government could breed corruption. A town manager could be corrupt, as well as a mayor could be corrupt, or a selectman could be corrupt. If not, I, I don't think that the mayoral form of government in its present state anywhere in the United States is a breeding ground for corruption. I think the individuals are the breeding ground, not the positions that they hold. Any person in a position of power could breed corruption. Does not necessarily mean just because the person was elected mayor that they're going to be more corrupt than a town manager. Do you feel that the, the mayoral system in Torrington, because that's the one you're familiar with, yes. um, has an, a proper amount of checks and balances in? Absolutely. Absolutely. This sort of thing. Yeah, because the mayor, the mayor has the power to run the city everyday operations, but he, but they know he or she, they know that their power comes from the council, that the council has to vote on on all the pressing issues in the city, and that's their checks and balance. We don't try to micromanage the mayor's job because his job is the responsibility of running the city, the day-to-day -day operations of the city, and we allow him to do that. If he wants to sign a contract with someone, the council has to approve him to sign the contract. If he wants to apply for grants and things like that, the council needs to approve that. So I think there's, there's many checks and balances in, in our current system, and I think it works well. Uh, and I think that you know, your system now, not just yours, but the, but the town manager form of government, I have always been completely opposed to that form of government because all the surrounding towns, you see nothing but turnover. Can you get that same turnover in uh, an elected mayor's position? Absolutely. But that person would have to anger the, the, uh, the electorate, not just a few people sitting on a board. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. If, if, the, if the people voting feel that a mayor or a council member or any other member that's elected is doing a good enough job, they'll reelect them. And they have that say in currently every two years. If they don't think they are, they can vote them out. If you hire, in, in like for example in Winston, if you hire a town manager and the Board of Selectmen doesn't like that town manager, then they can oust them. The, the, the voters have no say. And, and I think that that's not enough checks and balances, personally. I think that the, the, once you're elected, you're held accountable. And I think that's the way to go, is if you're going to have somebody in charge of your town or your city, then it should be somebody that's going to be held accountable by the electorate, not by a handful of people. Have you in Torrington ever considered a town manager? For There's been talk of it, but uh, I don't really think that's the way to go. I, I, I would not vote in favor of that. The next question is a tough one, too, and that is that when, when you start mentioning uh, we're going to have a mayor who will be elected, or man or woman, whatever, first thing you say, everybody says is, any nut can run for mayor. Right. Absolutely. And um, then I'll start naming off all the nuts in town. Right. Sometimes they'll throw my name in there, I think. <laughs> but anyway, uh, what's your feeling about that? Well, I think that it's up to the voters. The voters, is, the voters are intelligent. You know, most people don't give the voters enough credit. They know who is and who isn't based on their, their personalities, their uh, performance in, in debates and in speeches and, and things that they do. Um, you know, I've been, I've been reading this, uh, and, and, you know, and again, please don't take this as, as anything disparaging. Uh, I read uh, the sound off columns in the Register Citizen, of course, anonymous, so they can say just about anything. But uh, they took a comment, I'm sure out of context, that your town manager said that he doesn't know where any more money could come from. So, of course, they come back and say, well, how qualified is he really to be the town manager? Because he doesn't know. Well, you know what? There, you can search and search for years and never find another place to take money from without you know, eliminating employees and cutting services to the people. So, so it was a legitimate statement made and taken out of context, and all of a sudden he's not qualified to be the town manager anymore. Uh, will mayors make statements that people think, geez, how did he ever become mayor? Well, he became mayor by the popular vote. So I think that the voters, I give the voters credit enough to be intelligent enough to not put someone in there that's this less than scrupulous. How about the political parties? I mean, they have a responsibility there. There's no question. They don't, you know, I mean, I have to tell you that even though this is my fourth term that I've won, 
I still have to be interviewed every every election time. They don't just say you're going back on the ballot because you want to. I have to sit in front of a panel of my peers and uh, on my on the Republican Town Committee, and I'm interviewed by by a panel of a dozen people. And if they don't like my answers, then they won't endorse me to run. Now, how often uh, does somebody that's not a Democrat or Republican actually run for mayor? Uh, occasionally, not often. Uh, you'll find that you know maybe every every three or four terms, somebody will pop up and. And I actually did. I ran as an independent, as a petitioning, and not an independent, as a petitioning candidate when I was a Democrat. And I got enough petition signatures to put myself on the ballot, and I ran against the Republican and the Democrat. Uh, both, one was an incumbent and one was a former mayor. <coughs> and uh, I took, I think, 1,700 votes in that race, which was quite a bit for, for a petitioning candidate in the city of Torrington. Uh, it wasn't enough to win, of course, but... And then there's debates on, on who is it that I actually hurt. Did I hurt the Republican candidate or did I hit the, hurt the Democratic candidate? But, of course, I was the spoiler and, and, and you know, named the spoiler and tagged with that. And, and uh, I didn't do it to spoil. I did it to run, and I legitimately wanted to win the race. So That's good. Now, I just want to ask a couple questions about the finance board. Um, is people are concerned about a right. separate finance board. Yep. Right now, we have a combined finance board to selectmen. What do you think the advantage is of the of your finance uh, of a finance board in your form of government that's totally separate from the? Well, there 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 are more checks and balances. It, it, I think it's a, it's a uh, fairer, more equitable system that we have, and I honestly feel that we should we should personally have a an elected finance board. People disagree with me on that, but I think that uh, again, accountability. You know, the, a board that of that power, because honestly, that the city council may approve the budget, but it doesn't pass until the finance board says it's okay. And you know, most money doesn't get spent in the city without that finance board doing it. We have a lot of very good intellectual people there that have a lot of knowledge and background in that field. So in that respect, I agree with appointing because we can't appoint accountants and we can appoint people with money background and financial background. Uh, and if they run for office, would we get that quality? Maybe not. We might get the popularity contest again and they're going to win because of the popular vote, not because they know anything about finances. So there's pros and cons to both of that, but I think a separate finance board is the only way to go because there are checks and balances. There's that extra step. And most people say that that's just one more layer of bureaucracy, but it's a, it's a needed bureaucracy. It's a, a needed layer that you have to have that check and balance. What is your relationship with the Board of Education? Do you do you have any relationship with the? Board Not of really. Education? All no, the I know system. members. I know members of that. But but the city the city council and the mayor have no control whatsoever of the school budget or their daily operations. But what, what about, about the finance board? The finance board only has control over the budget dollars. In other words, when the budget comes up, like, it, like the last one that came up, and they say, you have to cut a million dollars from your budget in order for this to pass through us. But they can't tell them where. They can only say you need to cut a million dollars. They cannot designate where that money is coming from. They have no control. That's all state control. There's nothing that the city can do to say where that money comes from. But uh, don't they try to get more information from the school to see if their million dollars is... Uh is a sane uh, cut? Well, they, they, they do look at other things. We, there is a member of the Board of Finance that's a liaison to the Board of Education. So during the budget talks, they have a member of the Board of Finance that attends all their budget hearings. So they, they're very knowledgeable when it comes to the, to the set budget as to how that budget was arrived at and what cuts can and can't be made or should or shouldn't be made. But Unfortunately, in our situation, every time that, that the, the finance board says to cut, the administration, Board of Education administration, starts saying we're taking programs away from kids. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that's a scare tactic that goes out. The parents start revolting and saying, well, why are you doing that? You can't cut that money. But they never look at administrators. We are very, very heavy on administrators in the Board of Education in the city. That's, I think, the first place you need to look when you have to make cuts.
Okay, what about revenue? You know, getting an adi additional taxpayers into town, like up on the top of East Main Street and things. How much of a role does it does the city council play in that? Well, the council doesn't do a lot. What 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 it is is that's usually done with the economic development coordinator. She's the one who brings people in. We have the corridor now, you know, between Winston and Torrington, and we have tax incentives that we offer businesses to come in. So that's an active part of her job. It's really not the council's job. What we do is we have to approve people for the, the tax relief for the, you know under the corridor and we also have to improve uh, approve any incentives any tax incentives that we may give to a company moving in because we can do that for up to seven years on certain companies so uh, that's we play a role there but as far as an active role in trying to get them in that's done that's why we have an economic development committee or, or person and the mayor's office uh, also plays a very They're heavy responsible hand. to the mayor they are yeah they are Okay, before I pay you one compliment, I wanted to ask you, do you have any other uh, uh, issues that you'd like to bring up or any... Uh no, I, I, again, I just see that, I, I see that, and not in just Winchester or Winstead, uh, I don't think that the town manager is a prudent way to run a government or to run a municipality. I think that the, the, the best way is the accountability because you're really doing it now, but you have that extra step of the town manager. When you have your election, and uh, I don't know how it is today, but it used to be the one who got the most votes was the mayor. No, no now they're they're uh, the now they vote amongst vote. themselves. Yeah. But when you did it that way, it was the same as Torrington. <laughs> the person ran for mayor got the most votes. He was the mayor. Mm -hmm. You know. So, and I just think that that it's time that I, I would I would like to see every municipality have a mayor. I really would because you have more continuity the person is in there and they're doing a good job then the voters are going to tell them that and they're going to let them you know keep going forward okay well i did i do notice that when i'm in the meetings and i come to quite a few meetings down in Torrington of all sorts that uh you're usually pretty well prepared and you usually have some pretty interesting questions some of which will be on this video i'm going to show up here <laughs> but you. i but i did pick up at one meeting where you were trying to interest people in getting uh the tax uh, returns done quicker. I guess in Torrington, the mayor has instituted a program that if somebody's owed some return on their taxes, right. they get it pretty quickly. And you were trying to move up the state level with that. Or did, I, did I misinterpret? No, you did not misinterpret that. I went. Uh, I did testify at at at, uh, at the state capitol on that bill. It was to require all tax collectors in the state of Connecticut to notify anyone of an overpayment. Um, it came out of committee came out with a, with a fabulous vote in favor, but it never made it to the final vote. It got pushed someplace aside and never actually made it to the final vote, but I did testify uh, on behalf of that bill uh, at the state capitol, and I'm hoping that the, the next session that they're going to revive it and bring it back up for a vote. It seemed to get a lot of interest, and out of committee it came out with a, with a very positive vote, but it just never got to the final vote. And well, that's the breaks we get, but it's well, to You do do that, right? You do. Well, we do. Uh, that was one of the investigations that I had talked about earlier, one of the two investigations, that there was uh, some, some things happening that we needed to look into, and uh, out of that came the fact that there were a lot of people that had made overpayments and weren't aware of it, so the mayor did institute that uh, every year that the tax collector, because we are unique in that we are the only municipality in the state of Connecticut that has a private tax collector. So. Okay, well, Rick, I want to thank you very much. You've got a friend. very, very interesting background. You've uh, done a little of everything uh, here uh, and uh, been in multiple parties and multiple with various uh, mixes of all these boards and things, and uh, I think it's very healthy, and I want to thank you for taking time. It's to my here. pleasure. And one thing I want to mention, too, is that uh, um, I spent 15 years as the chairman of the Committee on Youth in the city of Torrington, and, and the youth is very, very dear to me. So I, I, and, and, and I work a lot with the Senior Center, so I just I like all, all aspects, uh, young, old, everybody in between. And, you know, I just I, I like city government, I like being involved in government, and I like being able to affect change uh, whenever possible. So Okay, well, it looks like Torrington's lucky to have you. I thank you for that. Thank you for allowing me to do this, and, and I hope that everything works well for the city. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, that was Rick Della Valle, a man of quality and conviction. 
and you'll see that throughout these interviews I'll be doing over the next three or four weeks. Um, next week, uh, I will be having uh, another um, long-serving member of the Tarrington Board of Councilmen, a Democrat, next time to show some balance. So thank you very much. See you next week. Oh, dear, what can the matter be? Oh, dear, what can the matter be? Oh, dear, what can the matter be? Most voting is five to two. Five to two is the best we can do. Five to two is the best we can do. Five to two is the best we can do, no matter who is in charge. Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? The manager must do as he's told. The manager must accept the direction. The manager must accept the direction. The manager must accept the direction. Not good with a leadership change. Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? The manager is then replaced. Another manager, more of the same. Another manager, more of the same. Another manager, more of the same. Happens over and over again. Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? Maybe it's time for a change. Perhaps we need another town government. Perhaps we need another town government. Perhaps we need another town government to give us a chance to improve. Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? The mayor must run for the office.